Chinese car brands are not exactly known for their sports cars and coupes. In fact, in their 70 years of making cars, they've probably made about five. Let's give it a go. Geely Beauty Leopard, Brilliance Coupe, BYD S8, Chensu K50, and maybe at a stretch, the Leap Motor S01. But thankfully, that's all changing. And this is a brand new one. It's the Netta GT. Yes, this is the Netta GT. Very sleek, very sexy two-door electric coupe. Just how we like them. But why is Netta making a coupe? Bear in mind, this is the same Netta that currently only has three other cars. The somewhat quirky V, the much more competent U, and the actually rather sexy S sedan. But they only sell 11,000 cars a month. What makes them think that they can sell a coupe in the conservative Chinese market? I don't exactly know why. Don't exactly know if it'll be any good but we'll find out in this video. And I'm certainly glad that they've given it a go because we do need more coupes in this market. But we start with a very attractive car, one that looks much better in person actually than in videos. But here you can see we've got these large banana shaped headlamps with these sort of ice graphics in there. They light up when the car starts, very attractive. Down here, we've got fake air inlets, gloss black plastic, they channel air around the wheels there. We've got a gloss black plastic diffuser across the bottom, gloss black plastic power domes to make it feel powerful and aggressive. Of course, it doesn't need power domes. It doesn't have an engine inside there. We've got these great two-tone brushed aluminium wheels, 19 inch. These wheels are actually half the height of the car, classic sports car proportions. We've got a fake gloss black plastic air outlet there, of course, because we don't have an engine in this. And we've got 1.4 meter long doors to get access to this cabin, which is actually quite airy, quite spacious. A lot of light in there because of all this glass. And then we come back to this big chunky rear haunch, which really makes the car feel very planted on the road, which is what you want from a coupe. You want it to feel wide and secure and aggressive. And it does feel very wide when you're driving it. It's actually just under two meters wide. So it is pretty wide, quite compact though, in terms of length. Now here at the back, we do get a very slick rear end. We don't get a spoiler. We get sort of a chunky lip at the top here, just above these aggressive lights with really cool, intricate details in there. They're very nice. At the bottom, we've got a gloss black plastic diffuser to make it look more sporty. And in here, the non-electrically operated trunk, a little bit heavy that, 297 liters of space. And if you pull these handles here and here, you can lower the rear seats 50-50 to get a bit more capacity in there, some more through space. We also get a 50 liter trunk on this car as well. So for a coupe, a sports car, it's actually not that impractical. But of course, this is a sports car and therefore we do need a sporty cockpit. And we get that because we get this bright orange trim on the steering wheel, on the dashboard, on the doors, on the handles, on the chairs, and on the armrest here. You can also get this interior in white and blue and black with lime green. So it certainly has all the sporty credentials. We get a pair of screens in this car. So we get a 10.25 inch screen there behind the steering wheel. Nice and big, nice and bright. Certainly a lot of information on there. And in the middle here, we get a 17.6 inch 2.5K portrait style screen. And I do think the portrait style suits the interior of this car. Now this screen runs on the Snapdragon 8155 processor, so it's got a quick chip behind there. But I do find the screen is sometimes a little bit less responsive, just like in the Ion Hyper GT. You do get kind of slidey ventilation. You have to click on the vents at the bottom and then change the temperature like that. If you wanna go into the vents here, you get this small box. You have to tap on that a couple of times. You can change your ventilation in there and also turn on your heating and ventilation for the front two seats, which you get on most cars, I believe, except for the base versions. This screen has got a lot of stuff going on now. I'll talk more about it later when we're driving, but we've got 360 degree camera in there. So you can also turn around the car and put it in 3D, spin around the car like that. So that works quite well. We've also got a lot of stuff in the menu. If I click on the car button down here, we have some quite biblical menus in this car. A lot of stuff going on, a lot of customization, but some of that you will really like. There's a lot of good stuff going on inside this screen. We do get a decent choice of materials in this car. We've got a bit of fake carbon fiber here on the center console, but on the dashboard and the doors as well. We get soft leathery materials on top of the dash and the doors. We get some kind of soft foams in here. It only really gets more plastic down at the bottom 
in the door pockets, but that's kind of what you'd expect. This is an affordable car. It's also very spacious, a lot of space here. You get a big space down there under the center console, a little bit behind the screen here as well. Decent door pockets, a glove box on this car, and a decent amount of space in the center console. We get a couple of creature comforts. We do get a driver distraction system that will warn you if you, you know, start yawning and things like that. We get a 50 watt wireless fast charger here. To be honest though, I probably wouldn't even bother with that. It doesn't charge your phone very quick and it doesn't have any ventilation, so it does make your phone hot. I would much rather plug the phone into the USB-C socket. Don't even really bother with the wireless charger. Now, a really interesting feature here, kind of interesting, is this crystal switch at the bottom of the screen here. This is called the one-touch ejection button, and you can basically program this to change between the modes of driving that you prefer. So you can pull that down, you see the flames across the bottom of the screen. That means we're now in sport mode, quick way of getting into sport mode. That'll just flick between two different modes, but you do get Eco, Comfort, Sport, and one pedal driving in this car, and it actually works, but I'll talk about that later on. The driving position isn't exactly ideal. The seats themselves are pretty good because they're quite sporty, big chunky bolsters on the bottom and on the side, but the chair, the driver's chair is only six way adjustable for forwards, backwards, up and down, and backrest adjustment. So I would ideally like to have a little bit of tilt on the base cushion just to give you that really sporty feel. Also the steering wheel doesn't really have quite enough reach adjustment, a little bit more reach, a little bit of tilt adjustment would just polish this driving position off. Steering wheel itself is quite attractive. We've got a flat top and flat bottom on there, makes it look quite sporty. Little nodules on the side here and low thumb holes to really give you that sporty feel. Do quite like the steering. We get electric door release buttons here. We also get a 12 speaker sound system, which is plus amplifiers, which is 5.1.4 surround sound. In fact, the bass units are actually in the chairs. So the bass is coming through your spine as you're listening to the music, which is interesting, I would say. We also get a decent sized panoramic roof here, which lets a lot of light into the cabin and not too much heat, which is good. But it does feel like all of the creature comforts are in the front of this car, not so much in the back. Now getting into the back of the car is quite easy because we do have 1.4 metre doors, but, well, headroom is a little bit tight, actually. And there's a squat there to fit under this, under this rear window. <laughs> Press the button there to release the seat and put it back towards me. We'll see exactly how much space I've left myself. Oh, the chair's just gone up a little bit. It's detected that my feet are there. That's quite smart, actually. But yeah, definitely a little bit tight on headroom in the back of here. Not too bad on knee room. I think they've actually changed the seating position of this chair to accommodate for the fact that somebody's in the back, like they've detected that somebody's here, but I, I could not sit like this. This is definitely a back seat only for kids. I feel like I'm gonna get a neck, <laughs> neck problem here. No, so not that much space in the back. You don't even get a USB-C hot socket in here, actually. You do get a little sign here that says share. So I think you can maybe tap your phone on there and share your screen on your phone onto the main screen there, which you'd kind of need to because your head's gonna be looking like this anyway. You get little triangle windows here. You get orange seat belts, which I like. You get little speakers up here, some on the back there, another one on the back shelf. And of course these seats fold 50-50, but you can't pull them down from the inside. You can only do that from the trunk. Yeah, somewhat more compact in the back than it is in the front. Now for the driving part of this review, I could have taken you to the city because let's be honest, this car is probably gonna spend most of its time there. But I thought, no, we need to test out the dynamic prowess of this car. Let's test it on some country roads. Some of the best country roads in Hangzhou are closed at the moment because of the Asian games. I'm not sure exactly why, but we have managed to test this properly and really give it a go. But before I get onto the country driving part, let's talk about the city driving because I've had that for a whole week. And honestly, it's very easy to drive, very pleasant. You just put all your settings onto light and easy. The only difficulty is that it is quite a wide car. So you do feel that sometimes, but it's very easy to drive. The ride, the ride is certainly very comfortable and it handles all the bumps even though it's got a quite a stiff ride it doesn't ever feel uncomfortable it'll handle the big bumps and the small bumps really quite comfortably it's also incredibly economical it actually consumes on average and this is tested tested and proven in real life just 13.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers which is brilliant really really low consumption on this single motor version and if you convert that into petrol it's actually 179 miles per gallon. That's the benefit and the efficiency of electric cars. But as I said, let's talk about the countryside 
handling dynamics of this car. And actually, it's quite impressive. It feels very, very stiff, feels very, very planted. Yes, if you do do a little bit of snaking, then you maybe get a little bit more body roll, but on the whole, it's quite a sporty car and does feel very enjoyable to drive here on these twisty mountain roads. Braking performance is also pretty good as well. I think it will stop in about 33 point something meters. Not bad at all. It certainly gives you all the performance you need for quick changes of direction, quick overtakes if you need them. It's really, really quite enjoyable. Now in this car, you also get quite a lot of customization of the driving mode. So you get your standard eco, comfort and sport. You also get one pedal driving. And in this car, it's genuine one pedal driving. Most other Chinese cars will give you one pedal driving up to the point that it then starts to creep at traffic lights. In this car, you get the option to change that. You can either have it coming to a full stop or if you like it creeping, then you can do that. You can also, of course, change the energy recovery, make it softer or harder and harder. It's certainly pleasant to drive, not aggressive at all. And actually, you can just come to a stop if I lift off the accelerator now. Take my foot off the brake. You can see we will come to a complete stop. So it's good. It works. It works really well in practice. And you can also change, of course, the steering feel. I've got it on the hardest feel. Honestly, the difference between soft and hard is night and day. The soft version is very, very comfortable to drive. You'll use that around the city most of the time. If you put it in hard, it is comically more aggressive than in the soft mode. It becomes really, really heavy. It feels like you're suddenly turning you know, a ton of bricks, basically. Now, single motor versions of this car do get decent performance, actually. We've got the single motor version at 170 kilowatts on the rear axle, 310 newton meters of torque. That will get you from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 6.5 seconds on this one, but with the medium sized battery. The smaller batteries, you'll do that in 6.7 seconds. Now, the dual motor version basically doubles your numbers. You whack another motor on the front, another 170, another 310 newton meters of torque for 340 and 620 newton meters of torque combined, which is pretty, pretty rapid. That will get you zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just 3.7 seconds. So very, very quick. Now, I mentioned just now that you get three choices of battery in this car. You get a 64 kilowatt hour battery, a 74 and a half kilowatt hour battery. It's the one that we've got and a 78 kilowatt hour battery on the dual motor version. And they will get you 560 kilometers CLTC range on the smaller battery, 660 kilometers on the version that we've got, and 580 kilometers on the dual motor version with the larger battery. Now in reality, this car is actually very economical. On the way, as I said, in the city, 13.7. On the motorway, on the way here, proper motorway speeds, 100, 120 kilometers per hour, it was achieving 13.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Now I did measure it up against the CLTC range that is stated on the battery, it did 100 kilometers, and in reality about 140 kilometers came off the battery range. So that's what you're expecting in terms of differentiation from that range. In terms of charging, not entirely sure exactly the full speed of the charging on this car. They say to charge it 30 to 80% is over or equal to 30 minutes. I charged it once so far on a fairly slow charger and it was about an hour and a half to go from 4% to 90%. So not too bad, probably about half an hour to get 50% more range in this battery. That's quite adequate. That's even on a bad charger as well. Now in terms of competition for this car, there's not really a lot out there. The only one I can think of is the MG Cyberster and the price is where this car is gonna make a difference. And to be fair, we don't know the price of the MG Cyberster in China, or even if they'll sell it in China, but it is very affordable for this car here in China. It starts, wait for it, at just 178,800 RMB. That is under 20,000 pounds, just under $25,000. Not bad at all. And if you go for the dual motor version, the full kitted out version with all the power and speed, that is 226,800 RMB, which is still under 25,000 pounds and about $30,000. Not bad at all. Really, really affordable car and a lot of fun for that. Very well kitted out interior, decent performance. You can't argue with that. It's amazing. I don't know how they're producing cars at this price point that have this much kit in them. In terms of dimensions, I did mention that this car is quite compact. 
but also quite wide at the same time. So just under two meters wide at 1.979 meters wide. It's 4.71 meters long, 1.41 meters tall, and has a fairly short wheelbase of 2.77 meters. But that compact wheelbase does make for quite enjoyable handling. Certainly, it's quite useful in and around country roads like this. I've really, really enjoyed driving this car. It's been much better than I expected from Anetta. I wasn't expecting that much. It's been really, really good fun to drive with the great steering performance. Honestly, I've just enjoyed being much closer to the ground. I'm glad that somebody had the imagination to say, let's make something a little more interesting. And the world is all the better for having the Netta GT in it. Okay, so that's it for our review of the Netta GT. Is this car actually any good? You know what? Surprisingly, yes. This car is much better than I thought it would be. I really like the styling of this car. I like the sporty interior. The performance is not bad for the rear motor version. I think the dual motor version would be much more exciting and much quicker. But I like that you've got a lot of sporty customization for the one pedal driving and the really, really heavy steering. And the ride quality isn't that bad at all either. It's a very good effort. And you know what? It just makes a change to be sat lower to the ground. It makes a change to be viewing something other than an SUV. So good on you, Netta, for breaking the mold and actually making something exciting. I hope more car companies start to branch out into things like this. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And if you do, thank you for subscribing. We'll catch you next time.